escape. Douglas had taken the midnight goods to a station on the other railway. He was shunting, ready for his return journey, when he heard a faint hiss. That sounds like an engine, he thought. The hiss came again. This time it sounded almost despairing. Who's there? He asked. A whisper came. Are you a fat controller's engine? I am proud of it. Thank goodness. I'm Oliver. We're escaping to your railway, but we've run out of coal, and I've no more steam. Is it from Scrap yet escaping? Yes. <laughs> then it's glad I'll be to help you, but we better work fast. Both crews joined in. They took off Oliver's side rods, rolled out transit la labels, and chalked Scrap everywhere they could. Douglas marshaled Oliver in front of his train. Now time to turn around, he panted. I'm gonna run tender first. Yoo-hoo! Yoo-hoo! yelled a passing diesel. A steamer's escaping! Yoo-hoo! Douglas puffed firmly on. Take no notice, he consoled. But they were stopped before they could clear the station throat. A foreman's lamp shone on Oliver. Aha! he exclaimed. A western engine. His light flickered further back. A western auto coach and goods break, too. You can't take these. Can we know? said Douglas's driver. They're all for us. See for yourself. Douglas's guard showed him the labels and papers. Oliver's crew hiding in the coach hardly dared to breathe. Seems in order, said the foreman grudgingly, but it's queer. Sure, and it is, began the guard. But I could tell you a quitter. So could I, interrupted the foreman. Right away, guard. A near thing, puffed Douglas with relief. We've had worse, smiled Oliver. We ran at night. Friendly single man would pass us from box to box when no trains were about. We got on well till Control heard about a mystery train. Then they tried to hunt us down. What do you do? A single man let us hide on an old quarry branch. Driver, fireman, and guard blocking the cutting with rubbish and levered one of the approach rails away. We stayed there for days, with diesels baying and growling like hounds outside. I was very frightened then. Smell blame to you, said Douglas feelingly. Presently, they rumbled over the bridge and onto the Fat Controller's Railway. We're home! They can't catch you new! Tell Isabel and told, please. Douglas called out the news and heard a joyful ting a ling a ling, ting a ling a ling. He was surprised. Oliver chuckled. That's Isabel, he said. There is a bell on her, you see. She's clever. When we go out together, I pull one way and push the other. When I pull, I can see ahead. When I push, I can't. So Isabel keeps a good lookout and rings her bell to talk to me. You didn't say. Douglas was impressed. A booth is tooled, he continued. Is he? Heard your weesh, said his driver. Yens the works. We must slip in unbeknownst and find a place for Oliver. Douglas tried hard to be quiet, but the night foreman heard them and had to be told their secret. I know just the place, he said, and showed them an empty siding nicely hidden away. Oliver said goodbye and thank you, and Douglas puffed away. Yen's an enterprising engine, he thought. I went away here with Donald, but I'd been feared to do it on my own.